Good morning. Magandang umaga po. May I invite everybody to stand? Yung. Good morning po. Pwede niyo po bang batiin ang inyong mga katabi? <laughs> Good morning, Pastora Josie. <laughs> Sige po, tayo may nalangin. Let us pray. Panginoon, maraming salamat po, Lord, for another day. Panginoon, ngayon pa lang, hindi pa man nagsisimula ang aming pag-aawitan. Lord, inaalay na namin sa iyo ang aming mga puso, ang aming mga pagsasalamat, ang aming pagsamba. Lord, I pray na would you meet us today. Katagpuin niyo kami ngayong araw na ito, Panginoon. And Father, I pray would you prepare our hearts as we worship. And would you have your way. In Jesus' name and everybody say, Amen. Yeah, let's do this. Ang ilog ng papuri ay 
hindi mapipigil, hindi matutuyo. Tuloy-tuloy ang awit para sa'yo. Before we continue singing, I shared this to the worship team. Sinabi ko to nung Friday. We are familiar with that scripture that says, No weapon formed against us shall prosper, right? Uh, iniisip ko siya for months now. And narealize ko na I tend to focus too much dun sa part na hindi siya magpa-prosper. And it's not a bad thing, you know, to focus on the victory side of it. Pero narealize ko din na a lot of people here Ako, ako din, nakikita ko yung weapon being formed right before my eyes. And it's a, it's a reality that's happening sa, sa buhay natin, you know? And that makes songs like these uh, hard to sing. Uh, parang, Lord, nakikita ko siyang nangyayari eh, di ba? Yung, yung, yung kinatatakutan ko nangyayari siya. But then, We realize na yung confidence ng di siya nanggagaling sa okay hindi ko na siya nakikita nanggagaling siya sa goodness ni God sa kabutihan ng Panginoon so as we sing this song again can we come to him in confidence God alam ko mabuti ka kakanta ko ngayon can we do that today church can we do that today church Let's sing the verse sing bumuhos ang ulan Umagos at halos malunod na Umihip ang hangin, pinilit na Ako ay itumba, binalot ng dilim ang langit Kinapos ng liwanag, pagtitiwala ko'y hindi matitinan Pangako mo'y aking sandigan at Biyaya mo'y lubos Ang bisig mo ang kublihan Hanggang matapos ang unos Paglipas ng pagod at luha Di maaaring kuminto Ang magbukal ng pagsamba sa aking puso Tuloy ang awit Sigaw ng aking puso Pagkat lakas mo ang taglay Tuloy ang awit Tuloy ang daloy at ito'y walang upay O ang ilong ng pakuri ay Hindi mapipigil Hindi matutuyo Tuloy-tuloy ang Praise the
just believe today that wherever we may be in life, whatever situation we are in, you are ready to reveal yourself, Lord. You are ready to reveal yourself strong as someone who will provide, as someone we can depend on sa bawat sitwasyon. So Lord, we just give you permission, Panginoon, na mangusap sa aming mga puso, na ipakilala mo ang inyo pong sarili sa amin, sa aming mga pamilya, sa aming mga pinagdadaanan, Lord. Lord, we just want to pray over those people, God, that is just going through hardships, that's just going through difficulties, that's going through mental health issues today. Lord, we speak your healing. We speak your sovereignty today. Kung ikaw ay nakakaramdam ngayon na paghihirap or may pinagdadaanan ka, gusto ka namin ipanalangin ngayon. So ikaw yon kung may pinagdadaanan ka uh, sa sitwasyon, may krisis ngayon sa buhay mo, sa iyong mental na kalusugan, sa iyong pamilya, maaari mo bang itaas yung kanang kamay mo at ipagpapray ka lang namin. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, you see those hands, Lord, na nangangailangan, Lord, ng inyo pong revelasyon ulit sa aming mga buhay, God. Na nangangailangan ulit ng inyo pong salita na magbibigay kapayapaan, Lord. That is beyond under our, un, our own understanding, Lord. So, Lord, I pray you would speak to them so clearly, so personally, they are loved, that they are cared for wherever they may be. As Lord, para sa amin lahat, Lord, I pray you give us the heart to trust muli, Panginoon. Give us the heart, Lord, to be dependent, to rely on you, to put our full weight on you, Jesus. To stand on your shoulders once again. Lord, we give you our hearts, God. We just give it to you no matter what it looks like, no matter what it's going through. I love you. We love you. All praise and honor in your name. Amen and amen. Amen. Come on, let's give the clap offering. Ating Panginoon.
God is so good. Amen? Uh, bato ko tayo. Umupo. Baka pwede natin patihin yung sa katabi natin. Sabihin hello. Nice to meet you kahit ngayon pa lang kita nakita. Yeah. Hallelujah. Magandang umaga po sa lahat. Thank you. <laughs> Magandang umaga po sa lahat. Ayan. Uh, ako po si Pastor Verlon. Uh, I'm one of the pastors here. Uh, and I am part of the marketplace. Uh, at galak, magalak na magalak kaming... Um, magalak ba? Galak na galak. <laughs> galak na galak kami na uh, makita kayo dito. Uh, whether it's your first time or matagal na kayo na nandito. Uh, kami masayang masaya. Yun, masaya na lang. Masaya na lang uh, na makita namin kayo dito. Uh, naniniwala kami na hindi aksidente na nandito ka. Uh, siguro hinata ka lang ng relative mo, yung mga nasa online po, yung mga shineran lang ng link bigla, kahit di nyo kakilala. Uh, we believe na meron plano sa inyo ang Diyos. Uh, kaya, for sure, God has a plan for you and you are right here. Uh, bago po tayo magpunta sa ating pagbibigay, I just want to give you a f- few announcements po na sobrang good news na nangyayari po sa ating pong church. So, this coming March 26, which is next Sunday, uh, magkakaroon po tayo ng Friendship Sunday. This is the time to invite your family, your friends nyo po, uh, whom you've never brought to church. So, siguro no, pagpasok nila sa church, nag-service sila, hindi pa rin nila alam kung ano ba ang ginagawa talaga ng church. That's the perfect opportunity po para tayo magkakilakilala at para malaman nila kung bakit natin ginagawa ang mga ginagawa natin. Bakit kayo nagtataas ng kamay? Bakit kayo nagsisimba kung pwede naman online lang? Bakit may mga pastor? Bakit hindi na lang mga believers, di ba? So, nandun po yung Friendship Sunday so that we can connect them to the church and they would really know why we're doing what do, why we're doing what we're doing. Uh, next po ay another Unstoppables Zoom event po. Grabe po, no? Ang mga Unstoppables po talaga. Unstoppable po sila every month. Diba? Ang pag-asang buhay, ba? Diba? Yan po ay mangyayari po sa March 23, uh, 2023, 9 a.m. Yan po. So, perfect po sa mga early birds. Uh, ito po ay via Zoom po. So, it's the perfect uh, opportunity for your parents, grandparents, senior relatives, uh, lola nyo na kapitbahay, kahit sino. At lastly po, uh, sa ating Holy Week po, uh, we have our Good Friday service Uh, on April 7 at 3 p.m. And sa Resurrection Sunday po natin, which is on April 9, uh, meron po tayong 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. service. So, um, ito yung mga perfect opportunity eh, kasi minsan yung mga hindi talaga, alam mo yun, wala talaga silang relasyon kay God. Pag Good Friday, pag Holy Week, mas malaki yung chance natin na ma-invite sila kasi, uy, Holy Week, di ba? May peer pressure sa lahat. Pero this would be the per- perfect opportunity na ma-invite natin sila. Amen? All right. Sa ating pong pagbibigay, uh, I'm gonna be sharing from uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 8 po. Uh, sinabi dito, sapagkat nalalaman ninyo ang biyaya ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo, na kahit siya'y mayaman, naging dukha siya alang-alang sa inyo, upang kayo sa pamamagitan ng kanyang kahirapan ay maging mayaman. Ito isa sa mga... mga verses talaga sa Bible na napapaisip ako na parang, talaga Lord, uh, sure ka pa sa ginawa mo. Like, mayaman ka na eh. Okay ka na dyan sa taas eh. Okay ka na dyan sa heaven eh. Pero the Lord talaga would show that life is beyond riches, physical riches, and everything that we own. But it's about our relationship pa rin talaga kay God. And so, kung meron kayong mga importanteng bagay sa buhay. Oras man yan, imahe, pera, kayamanan. I just want to open your heart uh, or I just want to encourage you to open your hearts na hindi maging masyadong mahigpit ang hawak natin sa mga bagay-bagay na ito. Kundi bukas pa rin ang ating kamay para magbigay sa kanya, para sa iba, sa mga nangangailangan. Uh, at alam natin yun, meron tayo kanya-kanyang bagay na mahigpit ang, pag, ang paghawak natin. So, let's pray po. 
Lord, maraming salamat dahil Ikaw yung naunang magturo sa amin or magpakita sa amin kung paano magbigay, kung paano mamuhay dito na may bukas na kamay upang ialay sa iyo ang lahat ng sa amin at para sa iba, Panginoon. Lord, I pray na turungan mo kami, Panginoon, na yung mga bagay na pinangahawakan talaga namin, Lord, na isurrender namin siya sa iyo, Panginoon. Hindi lang sa araw na ito, kundi araw-araw, Panginoon. Uh, mga pangarap namin, ng aming mga uh, pinansyal, aming mga pangailangan. Lord, na, naniniwala kami, Lord, na sulit, sundin ka, Lord, sulit na gawin ang ginawa mo, na maging bukas ang kamay, Lord, para sa iyo at para sa iba. Lord, alam ko na tinuturuan mo kami araw-araw na magtiwala sa iyo. Pero Lord, today, we choose to decide na Lord, you're worth it. At katiwa-tiwala ka, Panginoon. So Lord, sa aming pagbibigay, Lord, I pray na ma-bless ka na maging punong-puno to ng pagmamahal. Sa pangalan ni Jesus, Amen at Amen. Sige po, tayo po itumayo at pwede po tayo pumunta sa mga offering box to drop our giving. Also, for those na online po, uh, you can be giving through online, through our online platforms po. Maraming salamat. coming alive spiritually. Remember yung tanong ni Nicodemus, di ba? Sabi niya, how can I be born again? Ang laki-laki kong tao, paano ako babalik sa tiyan ng, ng nanay ko? And Jesus answered, flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. So regeneration is coming alive, spiritually being alive. Justification was our topic last week, no? By Pastor Albert. And through the story of Jesus anointed by the sinful woman in Luke chapter 7, we understand that God applies the righteousness of Jesus Christ in us. So, dahil sa ginawa ni Jesus Christ, no? Uh, we have been declared not guilty. We have been declared forgiven and free, no? Yun yung ibig sabihin ng justification. And so for today, we shall talk about sanctification. Sanctification. The word sanctify uh, in Greek is hagayazo. 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 It means to be set apart for God's exclusive and special use. Hagayazo. Di ba? When you think about hagayazo, it sounds like hagen does, no? May kukwento lang po ako, no? Hagendas. Para matanda, matandaan natin, Hagayazo, ito yung ibig sabihin ng sanctify. You are setting apart for an exclusive and special purpose. Before I became a pastor, I actually spent uh, very long years in the advertising industry. Ako po yung isa sa mga team na gumagawa ng mga advertising campaigns, marketing campaigns, and everything. And yung work na yon talagang sobrang overtime talaga. OT galore talaga yon Especially kapag merong ad campaign na lalabas. O kaya kapag merong kaming kailangan i-pitch sa clients, no? So talagang pukpukan talaga yung trabaho na yon And kapag nanalo kami doon sa pitch na yon meaning we get the account, we reward ourselves. At ano yung reward namin? hagen no? Each one of us, merong kaming tig-iisang pint of hagen and you know how expensive hagen das is, ano? Yan talagang mahal na mahal siya, ano? Creamy, yummy, talagang sobrang sarap talaga ng ice cream. Tapos merong generous spread of pecan nuts, no? And talagang kapag kinakain namin yon, para siyang victory meal talaga. Para siyang reward na, na celebratory. Kapag hindi kami nanalo, hindi kami kakain ng hagen das So ang hagen das is something that was set apart for a special purpose kapag nanalo kami, no? And so, on ordinary days, hindi kami buwing bilinon. Uh, and sobrang mahal din naman yon. Isa 
ganun kaliit, it's, it's super expensive, no? And so we only treat ourselves when there is a big campaign na, na napanood muna namin. Hagandas, no? Sanctify. So the word hagayaso means, or the word sanctify means na sinet apart mo siya for a special purpose. So ano ibig sabihin ngayon ng sanctification? Sanctification is God's act of making us holy, set apart for His special purpose. With our cooperation, God makes us more and more free from sin, and God transforms us to be more and more like Jesus Christ. So, isa siyang uh, process, no? This happens in three different stages, no? And later on, we'll talk more about that. Meron tayong yung pinakaunang stage, ito yung tinatawag na positional sanctification. E explain po natin kung ano yun. Yung pangalawa doon is progressive sanctification wherein we do that all through our lives, no? In fact, our entire Christianity is a progressive sanctification, a progressive transformation of being more, more and more free from sin and more and more like Jesus Christ. And ultimately, merong hope tayo na pinanghahawakan that we will receive the ultimate sanctification. So we'll explain that a little bit later. The work of sanctification can be seen in the story of Zacchaeus in Luke chapter 19. No? So, basahin natin in Luke chapter 19. English po ang aking verse, no? Uh, because when I try to look for the Tagalog translation, some of the translation did not have the kind of emphasis na meron sa English, no? And so, uh, uh, parang ano, um, come with me, no? Uh, as we journey together on, on this one. So, this is Luke chapter 19, verses 1 to 10. Sabi dito, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector. Meaning, siguro kung current term yan, kung 2023, siya yung BIR commissioner. Parang ganun, ano. And he was wealthy. Mayaman siya. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short and he could not see over the crowd, he ran ahead, climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. So, ang storya nito is that merong isang lalaki na uh, pangalan niya ay Zacchaeus and minensyon niya talaga na siya ay isang chief tax collector. Mayaman siya, pero maliit siya. No? Pandak siya. I am trying not to say that word nga eh kasi nakaka-offend na eh. Si ano talaga. Okay. So, maliit siya. He is shorter in stature, no? Alam mo kung mga BIR, hindi siya popular today. Mas lalong hindi siya popular during that time, no? Uh, kasi during that time, sila talaga yung pinaka-hated people ng, ng, ng mga hudyo. You see, etong mga uh, tax, tax collector na to, in order for the Roman government uh, to collect taxes, they would hire yung mga Jews. Mga hudyo mismo ang nagko-collect ng tax sa bawat isa. Bibigyan nila sila ng permission, bibigyan sila ng power. And yung sweldo nila, meron silang komisyon. So, sabi ng Roman government, okay, sa itong land na to, ang tax nito, let's say 10,000. Pero kung makakuha ka ng 15,000, yung 5,000, sa'yo na yon. Kaya talagang galit na galit yung mga hudyo sa mga tax collector. Kasi hindi lang sila yung mga parang thugs, Traitors pa sila. Can you imagine? The Jews were, 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 were already oppressed, no? Kasi land nila supposedly yun, eh. But the Romans conquered it, and they are the ones who are uh, leading that place. And on top of that, nagpapakolekta pa siya ng tax, no? Sa kanino? Sa sariling hudyo na nagbetray, no? Ng loyalties, no? So, kaya, so itong si Zacchaeus na to, Talagang isa siya sa parang public enemy number one talaga siya during that time. And not only that, he was not just a, a tax collector, he was the chief. Siya yung lead, leader talaga. So can you just imagine, meron siyang mga taot-auhan na tax collector, kung doon sa kung makakuha siya ng 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, talagang tibak-tibak talaga yung makukuha niyang pera. No? Kaya merong notation dito that he was wealthy. Kaso lang, he was short. And so, na balitaan niya na Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he went through Jericho eh, approaching Jericho. Kung titignan mo yung chapter before, ito yung story na nag-heal siya ng blind man. So, siguro, yung, yung 
yung, yung pangalan ni Jesus Christ, matunog na. And sabi niya, teka, gusto ko malaman kung ano nangyari kay, ano, anong, anong, anong sasabihin nitong Jesus na to. And so he climbed at that tree, wanting to hear what Jesus has to say. And so, when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up, tumingin siya, sabi niya, ay, may tao sa puno. Pero hindi siya kapre, kasi maliit, no? He said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down and he welcomed him gladly. All the people saw him and all the people started saying, Naku, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. Sa dami-dami pa naman ng tao na pwedeng puntahan, na pwedeng i-house visitation ni Jesus Christ, yung chief tax collector pa na public enemy number one. Can you just imagine that? So Zacchaeus naman, he was so delighted, no? But the crowds were quite unhappy with, with the choice of Jesus. Tignan niyo tong cartoon na to, parang exage naman, no? Parang kalahati lang yung height ni Zacchaeus, ano? Siguro just, just to prove yung emphasis na yun, ano? Sige, let's continue. But Zacchaeus stood up. Sabi niya, tayo ka, tayo ka. Nakatayo na po ako. <laughs> Sabi ko nga, bawal nga yung ganong joke, eh. Kau talaga... Bawal talaga, sige. But Zacchaeus stood up, talagang sinabi na dito, stood up talaga, and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to Zacchaeus, Today, salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and save the lost. So, itong story ni Zacchaeus is an example of sanctification. Paano ba nangyari? Kasi ba ang sanctification is making us holy. no? More and more freedom from sin and more and more being like Jesus Christ. So, tignan natin pa- paano ba nangyari yun. Jesus' invitation surprised Zacchaeus and so talagang winelcome niya talaga si, si, si Jesus. No? But something happened during the conversation. During the conversation, Zacchaeus was moved by the love of Jesus and acceptance that Jesus gave to him and he repented of his sin by admitting kung ano yung nagginawa niyang kasalanan. Ang, and he promised no, na hindi lang sa admission, hindi lang niya inadmit na meron siyang ginawa kasalanan, nag-commit pa siya that he will pay back. And yung word na ginamit doon sa English translation, sabi niya, here and now. Ngayon din, gagawin ko to. Itatama ko to. Yung kalahati ng pera ko, ibibigay ko sa mga uh, poor. At yung mga taong uh, para I cheated on, four times na ibabalik. Do you know that some of our stores here in the Philippines, practice this kind of policy. Kapag, they, kapag uh, the, the people were caught shoplifting, instead of putting them on prison, ang ginagawa nila, kung magkano yung ninakaw nila, times four yung, yung, yung ibabayad nung shoplifter na yon para makalabas from the store. Kung, kung ayaw mo pumayag, pumayag eh di diretso ka sa presinto. No? Sa nila nakuha yung times four na yon dito sa kwento ni Zacchaeus no. So nakita natin dito no na unang-una si Zacchaeus ang no ang tawag niya kay Jesus Lord. Lord. Yung mga ibang tao ang tawag nila kay Jesus Rabbi, teacher. But when Zacchaeus acknowledged Jesus to be the Lord, he is saying that Jesus is the master and first priority over his life. Pangalawa, napaka-ironic for Zacchaeus to say that kalahati ng possession ko bibigay ko sa mahirap. Kasi you have to understand that for Zacchaeus to be called as the chief tax collector, it means that all his life, he has, parang nagtago siya talaga ng wealth. And talagang kinarear niya niya talaga yung graft and corruption, no? To, to that point. And so for him to think about the welfare of the poor and being willing to let go of yung kalahati ng pera niya, means that God already started to do yung work of transformation sa puso niya. Nagkaroon na siya ng repentance. At ang pinaka matindi dito, he started to make things right. No? He said, ibabalik ko kung ano man yung ninakaw ko, times four yung ibabalik ko. So dito natin nakikita no, na ang ganda-ganda na ng uh, work of transformation dahil sa encounter niya kay Jesus Christ. No? 
And papano nag si Jesus? Sabi ni Jesus, today, salvation has come to this house, no? And He gives that clear assurance of salvation. Can you just imagine that? Hindi pa niya nakikita, no? Na ibabalik yung pera o kaya kung totoong binalik ba in everything. Pero nakita ni Jesus, yung puso nitong sinner na to na intent, who repented before the Lord. Ngayon, bakit sinabi ni Jesus di, uh, here that He is the son of Abraham, no? You see, just like what I mentioned earlier, Zacchaeus was a Jew. Hudyo siya. So part siya nung parang yung special people, special calling, di ba? However, the Jews talagang they, they reject him kasi nga nag, naging traitor siya, eh, di ba? So when Jesus said that uh, indeed you are the son of Abraham, Zacchaeus was saying na uh, by, whether by birth, but now also by a confession of faith, Zacchaeus is a son of Abraham and a uh, recipient to the promises of God in his life. No? So, yung, yung pinaka-last doon, sina, sinabi ni Jesus Christ, the Son of Man has come to seek and save the lost. Hindi lang niya hinanap yung mga lost. ni rescue pa niya. Di ba kapag nag-search party tayo, di ba kapag lang bata, magpapa-search party tayo, hanapin natin, bahay-bahay natin, magkakatok tayo, titignan natin kung saan ba yung nawawalang bata. Kapag nahanap ba natin yung bata, sabihin ba natin, ay, nandito ka pala. Okay, bye. At least alam ko na. Hindi, di ba? Ire-rescue talaga natin. And that's what Jesus intended for us. No, He has come in order for us to be sought, and to be saved, to be rescued. No? So, balik tayo doon sa definition ng sanctification. What is sanctification again? Sanctification is God's act. So, sino may gawa? Tayo ba? Nauna muna si Lord. It is God's act of making us holy, setting us apart for His exclusive and special purpose. However, tignan natin yung second sentence. Meron tayong part dito sa process ng sanctification. Sa process ng regeneration, wherein from dead, we came to be spiritually alive. It is purely God's act. In the process of justification, when God declares us not guilty because of the righteousness of Jesus Christ, ia-apply ko yung righteousness sa iyo. Meron ba tayong kinontribute doon? Wala. Hindi pa nga tayo buhay nung time na yun eh. So it is purely God's act. Sanctification is also started by God. However, humihingi siya ng kooperasyon sa atin. No? So God's, uh, with our cooperation, God makes us more and more free from sin and, more, and transforms us to be more and more like Jesus Christ. So paano ito nagsisimula? Meron nga akong mga big terms kanina. No? Yung unang-una dito, yung tinatawag nating positional sanctification. Yung position mo ba? Kapo, when you are in Christ, nagkakaroon tayo ng change of status. No? God sanctifies us at the point of our spiritual birth. The initial step of sanctification involves a definite break from the power of sin. Ito yung sinasabi sa Romans chapter 6. Eh. Sabi niya, we used to be slaved from sin. But at the point of rebirth, we have been set free from the power of sin. We are no longer controlled or dominated by sin. Ano ibig sabihin nito? Ibig sabihin nito, when we receive Jesus Christ upon our hearts, something miraculous happens. Linalagay ni Lord yung ganong klaseng status natin, yung position natin, wherein nagkakaroon ng definite break from sin. Dati, sinasabi natin hin, na, na talagang we are powerless over sin. And indeed, we are. But when we are in Christ, God cuts that chain off and frees us from the power of sin over our lives. Alam niyo ba yung term na marupok? Noong una, hindi ko magets eh. Kung ano yung sabihin ng marupok eh. Ginugal ko pa eh. Hindi ko talaga siya magets kasi sobrang dami yung mga memes na lumalabas. Hindi ko siya nagigets, no? Pero ito medyo nauso to. Siguro mga two, three, four years ago, no? Ang ganyan. Nung time namin, ang tawag namin, ano mang tawag natin? Ha? Parang ganun nga. Oh, hindi ko sasabihin yung word na yon. Si Pastor Verlon. Tanong niyo na lang kay Pastor Verlon. But uh, there's no English translation that is direct to describe marupok, no? Is it weak, vulnerable, fragile? But it doesn't see, but it doesn't full account yung, yung weight ng word na marupok, eh, no? Kaya talagang interesting, ano? So, 
madala sinasabi natin to, hindi ko kaya. Tao lang ako, marupok at mahina sa tukso. And indeed, if we have not gone through the spiritual rebirth, we are powerless against sin. Hindi natin kaya talaga. No? However, because Jesus Christ has, has done His work of, be, of dying on the cross, He frees us from the power of sin over our lives. He gains victory over death and He gains victory over sin. So anong dapat sabihin ng isang Kristiyano? Dapat sa ating, sa ating mga Kristiyano na, na who puts our faith in who Jesus Christ is, dapat sasabihin natin, Kristiyano ako. Kaya ni Lord at kakayanin ko sa tulong ng Diyos. Pagdating ng pagsubok, pagdating ng tukso, bibigyan ni Lord tayo ng lakas upang maging matagumpay tayo against all of that. Amen ba? So, ang isang kristyano, <laughs> hindi na applicable sa atin yung sinasabing marupok ako because God's Spirit is already in our hearts giving us that kind of positional trans- sanctification na transform na yung inside natin. Kaso lang ang question dito, bakit parang hindi halata sa ibang tao? <laughs> Di ba? Na, na, naririnig nyo ba yung ganong klaseng conversation na, uy, Christian din ako. Tapos sabihin, ay talaga, grabe, hindi yun lato. Di ba? May, nakakarinig na ba kayo naman ganong klaseng con- na, uh, conversation na, no? Bakit, however, minsan, kristyano, pero parang hindi mukhang kristyano. I remember when I was very new in faith, ano, because my parents were not Christians and they were against Christianity. Actually, ang, ta- ang, ang turo sa amin, tal- ang kinuusap talaga ako ng parents ko, ng, ng, ng father ko. And he told me, Chinese ka ba o hindi? Sayang, wala si Pastor Verlon. Hinihintay niya to. Sabi niya, Sina, tinanong sa akin ng tatay ko yon Chinese ka ba o hindi? Chinese. Middle Eastern ka ba o hindi? Hindi. Chinese ako. Well, ang Kristiyano ay para sa mga Middle Eastern. Dahil Chinese ka, Buddhist ka. Ganon ang orientation namin. And so when I started to become a Christian, every mistake that I make, no, ma, ma, uh, tumaas lang yung boses ko. Late lang ako umuwi. nag 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 uh, nag nagdabog ng ng pinto and everything talagang sinusumbat sa akin ganun ba ang gawain kristiyano and i'm sure some of you have already heard that and maybe some of you may have already said that to someone as well now so ang question ngayon bakit hindi lahat kung tayo eh meron ng power parang freedom from sin Bakit hindi hindi tayo parang super holy pa? Yung holy of the holies talaga, no? Na talagang kapag nakita tayo, oy Jesus Christ representation. Bakit hindi ganyan? Dahil God requires our cooperation sa tinatawag natin na progressive transformation. Ano ibig sabihin ng progressive? Ongoing. Ongoing. Pro, ano siya? Process siya. No? Work in progress siya, no? Sanctification increases throughout life. we are progressively becoming more and more like Jesus Christ as we obey God more and more. We become more and more like Jesus Christ and we no longer yield to sin as we spend time more and more in the presence of the Lord. Actually, ang pinaka-problema dito, kung bakit yung ibang tao hindi talaga parang halatang kristyano pa, is that meron talaga sila identity crisis eh. Kasi if we understand na God has already set us apart for His exclusive and special use, it should change yung desire natin. It should change our will. It should change the way that we want to do things or the way that we hate things. No? And we should no longer want to defile our body and our lives. Meron ng question. W- wag mo na yung slide. Ah. Tatanoy ko lang muna. Let me ask you, What is one possession that you cannot share with anyone? You can't share it with your husband. You can't share it with your wife. You can't share it. Hindi mo pwede i-share to sa parents. Ano yung, yung gamit? What I mean by possession, gamit, ano? Yung talaga hindi mo isa share Kasi minsan, Netflix account, nagsashare-an kayo, eh, di ba? 
Uh, ano pa bang sineshare nyo? Uh, Wi-Fi password, sineshare nyo rin yun, di ba? Uh, wallet, minsan, no? Kanina, may negosasyon na nanggaling, na, na nangyari eh. Sabi nung isang ninong, sige, ako nasasagot doon sa uh, ginastos nyo kahapon, no? Uh, so, magsashare ng, ng, ng finances. Ano yung isang bagay na hindi nyo isashare sa asawa nyo? May idea kayo? Toothbrush! Exactly! Very good! Sige, pupuntay natin sa next slide. Toothbrush, no? So, ang toothbrush is something that is exclusive, set apart for your use. Di ba? Ang mga husbands and wives ba dito, nagsasharean ba kayo ng toothbrush? Ew! <laughs> Ew, di ba? Kahit na super love mo yung anak mo, papahiram mo ba ng toothbrush? Eto na lang! Di ba? Mag- gumamit ka na lang ng kamay mo, huwag kang gum- gamit ng toothbrush kasi iwi siya eh. Now imagine this one. What if I borrow your toothbrush na para sa, sa teeth mo, personal mouth mo, and I use it para linisin yung sink? Lilinisin ko yung toenails ko? Doon ako magpa-pedicure? At gagamitin ko siya sa paghugas, uh, sa paglinis ng toilet bowl. Tapos afterwards, lilinisin ko, ibabalik ko sa'yo. Gagamitin mo ba yon? Sa bibig mo? Will you still take it and put it inside your mouth? Ew! Of course not, right? Now that's what... Hindi, alam mo. <laughs> alam mo talaga. Kasi gagawin ko talaga siya sa harap mo. Da-demonstrate ko siya talaga. Pero lilinisin ko, lalagyan ko ng hot water. May repentance naman eh. May water baptism naman eh. May cleansing naman from the dirt and transgressions eh. And I give it back to you. Will you take it? Of course not, right? Why? Kasi yung toothbrush na yan, hindi siya para sa kahit anong klaseng purpose. Para siya sa panlinis ng bibig ko lang. And so that is the picture of sanctification. God has set us apart exclusively for His special purpose. And so when we make choices that goes against the will of God, it is us defiling the very temple, the very dwelling place of His Holy Spirit. No? Kaso lang sobrang gracious ni Lord talaga. God takes us back and God cleanses us with the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on the cross. Isn't that amazing? No? So ano ba yung progressive transformation? Ang progressive tra- transformation, ito yung deliberate na isa-isa natin na we, we make daily choices by by with God's help no uh, with God's strength with God's power to break free to continue to choose to to implement yung freedom natin against sin over our lives and these kinds of things are done over one decision over the other in one situation over the other in every single day of our lives until such time nakukunin tayo ni Lord no so Tignan natin itong mga verses na to, no? In Romans chapter 6, ang sabi niya dito, Do not let sin reign in your mortal body. Huwag mong hayaan na yung kasalanan na siya yung maging hari no? ng, na, ng katawan mo. In Romans chapter 6, verse 19, sabi dito, Offer yourselves to uh, offer yourselves as slaves to righteousness leading towards holiness. In Romans chapter 8, sabi niya dito, Put to death. Ipat, i, hindi pala ipatay, patayin mo, I, ibaon mo, parang ganyan. Put to death the misdeeds of your body and you will live. And Romans chapter 12 verse 1, sabi niya, in view of God's mercy, kasi napaka-merciful ni Lord sa buhay natin, let us offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to the Lord. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 22 to 24, sabi niya dito, put off your old self, and put on the new self created to be like God in righteousness and holiness. So this, etong journey na to, this is going to be a daily affair. It's going to happen every single day. No? And Zacchaeus, in Zacchaeus' case, ang naging struggle sa kanya is really greed and love of money. No? But in our case, it could be a different thing, no? It could be putting off sexual immorality, putting off impurity, putting off evil desires, putting off lust, putting off rage, putting off anger, 
putting off filthy language, no? And putting on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, and all those things that God has uh, given to us as uh, the fruit of His Spirit in our lives, no? So God is saying that by His Spirit, put off sin and put in Christ. And that happens as an everyday journey over our lives. So God has already removed that chain, but God needs our cooperation in our continuous obedience to Him. No? Uh, dito natin makikita na talagang uh, parang process talaga yung, yung, yung sanctification. For some, dramatic siya, instantaneous. For some, hindi, no? But all of us, we must rely on the power of the Holy Spirit to set us free from the power of sin over our lives. Ngayon, tignan natin yung pangatlo. Ano yung ultimate sanctification? Ano yung ultimate sanctification? Ang point dito is that the Lord has given us freedom from the power of sin, but there is still the presence of sin over our lives. Actually, you just watch the news and you would see, you would see sin displayed right before your eyes. Sometimes you don't even have to look far. You just look at your own inner thoughts. All of those things na hindi mo sinabi sa ibang tao. No? And you would already see sin crawling at the door. No? And so, what, what, what does it say? It says that the Bible promises, God promises, no, na one day, we will all be freed from the presence of sin in our lives. And that happens either at the point of our death, or at the coming of Jesus Christ. Depende ko ano yung mauuna. And ang tawag natin dito is yung ultimate sanctification. It is completed at death and or when, 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 when Jesus returns. No? So ultimate sanctif sanctification, it refers to the final stage. No? Parang final, ano talaga, par final stage siya talaga of the believer's sanctification process. It occurs when a believer is fully and completely transformed into the likeness of Jesus Christ. Can this happen in our lifetime? Not yet here because the presence of sin is still here. But when Jesus comes and He defeats the enemy, He, Im he implements the victory over the enemy, that day will come when we are no longer, when we are no longer uh, in the presence of sin and we will be freed from the presence of sin over our lives. Ibig sabihin nun, no more sickness, no, no more pain, no more conflicts, no more needs and everything. And the Lord will, will bring us into a place that is talagang uh, in, in perfect peace no, in, in His life. So in, in ultimate sanctification, a believer is completely freed from the presence and power of sin. So how should this particular point help us? Ano? It should give us hope and it should give us patience. Minsan kasi parang nagmamadali talaga tayo, nag impatient tayo sa sarili nating transformation or minsan sa transformation ng ibang tao. At sinasabi natin, Lord, bakit parang hindi pa halata? Or bakit hindi pa nakikita ng family members ko, kung ano ginawa mo sa akin. Or, Lord, aka, but uh, aka, I thought na tumanggap na yung, yung, yung family member ko sa'yo, bakit parang hindi pa halata doon sa habits niya, no? And everything. This particular teaching should give us hope that God gives us, that God transforms us from glory to glory, pero yung ultimate graduation happens in the at the point of death, or when we see Jesus face to face, no. So that's a good, good, good hope. First John chapter three verse two. Can I ask the worship team, no? It says, "Dear friends, now we are children of God. What we will be has not yet been made known, but when Jesus appears, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is." Tiba na pa promise, ano? In Second Timothy, sinasabi niya dito na some of us. Those who cleanse themselves, oh Lord, and will become instruments of special purpose, made holy, useful to the master, and prepared to do any good. So sanctification, again, it is God's act of making us holy, set apart for His special toothbrush, ah, special purpose, hindi pala toothbrush, for His special purpose. However, God needs our cooperation. With our cooperation, God makes us more and more free from sin 
and transforms us to be more and more like Jesus Christ. No? So can I ask all, 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 all of you to stand? No? We, will, we shall do this declaration in terms of how to affirm uh, God's call and God's work of sanctification over our lives. No? Lagi natin yung kamay natin sa puso natin. Let's go to the next slide. Sabi natin, I am God's work in progress. Hindi lang tayo work in progress. We are God's work in progress. Amen po ba? So dahil gina, gin, tinatrabaho ni Lord yon. I will be patient and I will persevere. Say this with me. I will be patient and I will persevere. Ngayon, I want you to think about people in your lives na talagang ang laking trigger. Minsan, mas merong pa tayong pasensya sa mga hindi kristyano. Pero sa mga kristyano, wala tayong pasensya sa kanila. But God is telling us no, na hindi dapat ganun ang attitude natin. We should see that God is at work in each and every one of our lives. No? And so, kung sino man yung nakakainis na kaibigan natin, kapamilya natin, minsan ka-church, minsan ka-ministry, minsan pastor, <laughs> sana naman hindi. Pero meron talaga tayong mga ganong klaseng people in our lives, no? Na talagang who rubs us the wrong way. And so, think about them when you declare this. He is God's work in progress. Say this with me. He is God's work in progress. Say this with me. She is God's work in progress. I will be patient and I will persevere. Amen. Now, turn to each other. Look for a partner. And say this to each other. You are God's work in progress. You will be patient and you will persevere. Okay? Magtutulungan tayo, ha? We will, we will help each other to be transformed more and more like Jesus Christ. God's Holy Spirit enables us. And so this brings us to our last declaration. We are God's work in progress. We are God's work in progress. We will be patient and we will persevere. And we will persevere in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now, let us sing this worship song, no? And as we sing this, this song, this, this song is the, talks about how we are clays, no? And God is the potter's hand. And yung kamay ni Lord, yun yung nagtatrabaho sa buhay natin. Kanina, no, si Kuya Kim, yung worship leader natin, shared with us, uh, um, uh, I believe is a word from the Lord, no? Na sinasabi na minsan nakikita natin na yung weapon is being formed right before our eyes. And sometimes yung mga weapons na nag a sa atin, mga tao pa, mga tao minamahal natin. Mga pagsubok, mga trials, mga difficulties, you know, and, and we need breakthroughs in our lives, no? Know that in every trial, the Lord will not give us, will not give us something that is beyond what we can bear. And when you find yourself in the middle of a trial and temptation, God's word says, I will provide a way out for you. Amen ba? So as we go through trial, it is the potter's hand that molds us, that transforms us to be more and more like Jesus Christ. Okay? Let's sing this song. Kuya Kim. Let's sing. Wonderful Savior, I know for sure all of my days are held in your hands, crafted into your perfect plan. You sing, you gently call me, you gently. I'm 
nurtured by your holy calling, set me apart, I know you're drawing me to yourself, leave me Lord I pray, Gently call me. Oh, you gently call me into your presence, guiding me by your Holy Spirit. Teach me, dear Lord, to live all of my life through your. You see our anxieties. You see our needs. And you hear our prayers. Lord, I pray that right now, would you have mercy on each and every one of us, O oh Lord God. Lord, would you work in our lives, O oh Lord God. Free us, O oh Lord, from the power of sin over our lives. Give us, O oh Lord God, the gift of salvation. Give us the gift of faith, O oh Lord God, that will continue to, to put our full reliance, our full dependence on the power of your Holy Spirit in our lives. Lord, some of us, oh Lord, we are struggling with things that have ensnared us, Lord. Lord, right now, we pray, oh Lord God, that your anointing will break the yoke of slavery in this place. Lord, would you free us, oh Lord, from sin? Would you free us from these habits, these sinful habits? Would you free us from these thought patterns, oh Lord? Lord, we, right now, oh Lord, we command all thoughts to be submitted under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And we claim, oh Lord God, and we declare your victory over our, the situation of our lives, over the needs of our lives, over, over the things, oh Lord God, that we have lifted up to you. God, we pray for each family represented in this place, oh Lord. Will you continue to bring your work of sanctification, your work of continuous transformation, oh Lord, so that each one of us will be a salt and a light 
a testimony of your goodness in our lives. We, when we fix our eyes on you, Jesus, you are the author and perfecter of our faith, Lord. And we give you back all the glory and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Yay. God bless. God bless everyone. Have a good week ahead. Bring someone to church next Sunday. God bless for. For joining our worship service today we hope that the praise and worship of God inspired you we hope that the prayers uplifted you and we hope that the preaching of God's Word encouraged you and challenged you to live a life according to God's purpose for all of us I hope that every week you will join us in worship online and that you can share this to your family and friends classmates or office mates or neighbors so that together we may come before the Lord praising Him for all that He has done giving thanks and praise to the only God our Savior through Jesus Christ our Lord God bless you see you again next Sunday